again, thank you. So as uh, you said, my name is Denis Berrand. I am the curator of Dr. Brown Lee's collection of uh, stereo photographs, and I'm also the director of the London Stereoscopy Company. Now, we at the London Stereoscopy Company, we love 3D, we love stereoscopy, and we try to, uh, to promote stereo with books, with viewers, with cards. We try to do what uh, our predecessors in, uh, did in the 19th century. Uh, and their motto was no home without a stereoscope. But uh, we realized that even in the 21st century, it's quite a niche uh, subject and quite a niche uh, thing to do. And so the, the question is, is stereoscopy doomed to remain the poor relation of photography? Now, uh, strangely enough, um, uh, stereoscopy appeared before photography. Thanks to this man, this is the physicist uh, Sir Charles Whitstone, who was a, a teacher of experimental philosophy at King's College, nearby King's College, from 1834 to his death in 1875. And in 1832, he uh, designed uh, an instrument which he called himself, he termed himself, stereoscope, which means I see solid. So this is the original stereoscope. Uh, built by Charles Winston in 1832, but he didn't, he didn't actually uh, show it to the public until 1838, because the man was busy uh, promoting and developing the electric telegraph at the time. So this is his original stereoscope. It's, it's, uh, it works with mirrors, two, mi two mirrors at a 90 degree angle, and, and the, uh, the pictures were uh, put on either side of uh, in, in some easels, and uh, there was a rudimentary uh, uh, system of focusing here with a, a screw. And that, that was it. Uh, Wisdom himself could free you. He didn't need um, an instrument to, to fuse the two pairs that were needed for a stereoscope. But he invented that instrument. And that's the very instrument he presented to this Royal Society uh, 180 years ago now. So stereoscopy is officially 180 years old this year. Um, at the time, there was no photography, so you had to draw your own stereoscopic pictures. You had to close one eye, draw the glass, then close the other eye, and draw the, 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 what you saw with the other eye, and then the two pictures fused, sort of. So it was not perfect, but he was the first person to prove that all it needs to make 3D is two flat perspectives from a slightly different angle. And then photography appeared, and as soon as, as early as 1840, Winston asked uh, Fox Talbot, William Fox Talbot, the inventor of photography in England, uh, to take photos for him. So unfortunately, these photos have disappeared, but this is what they must have looked like, a quite exaggerated angle uh, at the time, because they didn't know, nobody had ever taken stereoscopic photographs, so they didn't know what the angle was. Uh, Talbot actually experimented with an angle of 47.5 degrees, which is far too much, and then he, he reduced it to 25 degrees, which is also too much, but again, they didn't know, so it was trial and error. Uh, Woodstock also, also invented the prismatic stereoscope, but he didn't really like it, and so he dropped it and preferred to promote his reflecting stereoscope. So at the beginning, this is what you could buy. These photographs were very expensive, so you could only buy uh, outline figures that demonstrated the principle of stereo photography, stereo stereoscopy, and binocular vision. And then uh, this man came along and he improved, he uh, improved uh, with stone stereoscope and he designed the, the lenticular stereoscope here, which is much smaller and enables the pictures to be side by side and portable. And then, this was how it began. So this is a, a typical stereo photograph here, two pictures side by side. They are not identical, they are slightly uh, different. They, are, they look very similar, but they are different, the difference between the two eyes. And this is the, the sort of uh, instrument you use to uh, look at them. Uh, and as soon as this was introduced, stereoscopomania was born. So this is a cartoon by uh, by Nadar in 1854, the birth of stereoscopomania. So everybody is glued to the oculus of their stereoscope. It was the television of the time. We, we mustn't forget that. There was no television, no internet, no computers, nothing, and, but there was stereoscope. 
1864, the London Stereoscopic Company, the original London Stereoscopic com Company was uh, founded, and two years later, they, they boasted 10,000 groups and scenes and views in their catalog, 10,000. Two years later, they had 100,000. And this is an advertisement for, uh, for December 1859. They were a clearing sale of one million stereoscopic slides. So this only five years after they were created. So stereo photographs were um, made by the million. They were the first mass-produced uh, photographs ever, before the carpet of disease and before any other, uh, any other kind of photos. And so they were sold all over the world. So this is a French advertisement for the Godin brothers in, in France. They also sold uh, stereos all over the world. They exported to the States, to uh, everywhere. And they had a catalog of pictures of Italy, Europe, India, everywhere. You could go everywhere. You could visit the whole world without, uh, without leaving your fireside. And so there were some uh, workshops, factories. This is a the inside of a stereoscopic factory in Britain. And so this is how it was made. Very, very, uh, uh, very few people actually working, but lots of photos created. And so the stereoscope appeared in the drawing rooms of most of the, the middle class people. And so you can see here, people having, spending an evening just looking at stereos. Again, no television, no telephone, no radio. No cinema, so they looked at stereos in the evening uh, because there was nothing else to do except, except, except chatting or playing. So you have lots of photos of people uh, looking at stereoscopes. And the Victorians always found that things were important if they were both educational and entertaining. So this is the educational part of the stereoscope. You can see a boy here looking probably at a photo uh, showing the country because this is a geography lesson. And why are they outside? <coughs> this is Britain. Why are they outside? <laughs> well, uh, because because it was impossible at the time to take photos inside. It was too dark, except in studios, special special studios. So they took things outside to be photographed. So you see lots of photos. People have taken all the furniture outside, and this is the school. The school takes place outside. It's not raining for a change. Uh, so we were very lucky. <laughs> And um, now, wh why the success of stereo? So this is, this is why it is so important, and why it was so important at the time. So this is a flat image. This is the Vatican, and this is the flat image. And this is the same one in stereo. i do that again. So flat image, yeah, sorry, flat image, yeah. And the stereo. So you can actually step into the picture. You can actually uh, imagine the dimensions of the, 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 the the, the things in the, in, the, in the room here. And here is another one, same here. This is the flat picture. It's a nice picture. It's well composed, it's well lit, but it lacks depth. And this is the depth of the picture. So you can actually see how deep this corridor is, this gallery is. And, and this is what people like. We must remember that in, uh, in, uh, at the time, what they knew from the world was only uh, engravings from magazines, from illustrating magazines, illustrated in the news in, in, in Britain and in the in France, for example. But that's all. And, and uh, uh, from 1854, five onwards, suddenly they could see the world. By 1859, they could go anywhere in the world. Uh, this is 1857, they could see the pyramids. But if you look at drawings of the pyramids and, uh, and uh, well, Abu Simbel here um, in, in magazines, I mean, you wouldn't recognize it. But they could actually be there, stand next to the statues. They could go to uh, China. Now, China in uh, 1859, here, this is 1859, was totally unknown. And uh, so was Japan. So you could travel all over the world discover countries and people without leaving your fireside, without any danger. Somebody else uh, went there and had all the uh, nasty experiences to take those photos. But just for a, a few uh, shillings, you could have the world at your doorstep. And so that's why people would spend evenings looking at these photos together. You could also meet celebrities. This is Charles Dickens, 1858. He's about to give a lecture 
is about to read one of his Christmas books, and a uh, photographer took a stereoscopic portrait of it. And you, you feel as if you were with Mr. Dickens. Uh, this is the Empress Eugenie. You, uh, you can also meet royalty. So this is the Empress of the French in 1816. This is her husband, Napoleon III. I mean, nobody had ever seen royalty so close at the time. This is 1858 on his uh, 50th birthday, and the photo was really very popular, so it's quite common to find. Uh, this is um, Lola Montes, the, the dancer, and uh, she was all, many other things, the mistress of uh, King Louis II of Bavaria. Uh, so she was also a lecturer at the time, and this was taken a few years before, just a couple of years before her death. Um, this is Queen Victoria. Uh, she doesn't look as pretty as the, the actress who plays a part in a famous series, but this is the real one, 1854 by Antoine Trudet. She was uh, already the mother of uh, eight children at the time, and she had been on the throne for uh, 14 years. And you could also photograph events. This is the opening of the Sydenham Crystal Palace in 1854. So, uh, and with the choir behind uh, the Queen is there on, on the day here. And there is a choir of 600 singers behind her. And this is what stereoscopy could do, could bring you to places you have never been or you couldn't go to because it was a bit exclusive. This is uh, Sydenham again, 1855, a uh, visit of the Emperor Napoleon III and his wife, so we've got Napoleon uh, on the left, and then Victoria, the Empress Eugenie, and Prince Albert. And you, you are in the front row, nearly, so you can actually look at them and see them as they were at the time. It's not imagination, it's not an artist's rendition. Uh, stereoscopy was everywhere in exhibition, I'm sorry, this one is flat, but this is an exhibition of the, the Photographic Society, and you can see stereoscopes on the tables. They were Stereo, stereo photographs at photo exhibitions. Have you seen that lately? Not really. Um, so this is a, a close-up of the, the tables and the, the exhibition of the Stereos Photographic Society. So this is what it must have looked like in 3D. Lots of stereoscope. And uh, you had a stand of stereoscopy in the, in the Crystal Palace. So, so this is what, how you could buy your stereos. You had Stereos at the exhibition in 1850-62 here in London. You had stereos at the exhibition in 1865 in Dublin with the stand of the London Stereoscopic Company here in the foreground. You had stereos in 1867 at the Paris exhibition everywhere. So stereo was everywhere and it remained everywhere for about uh, well 50 years. And then it disappeared, nearly disappeared. And nowadays, stereo is a time machine. This is the actual time machine from the film, The Time Machine, by the way, in stereo. And nowadays, when you open the history book, you see this. These are all stereos, but they are half stereos in the book. They are flat pictures. I mean, they were taken for the stereoscope to be seen in 3D, but no, they are seen in 2D. Even this book, it's a book about nudes. There are 1,000 nudes in the book. And they were made for the stereoscope, and they are flat. I mean, look at the photo here. This is the photo flat, and this is the same lady in 3D, much better. And they were made, <laughs> they were made for the stereoscope. So why can't we look at them in stereo? Uh, we, we have been trying, uh, uh, the London Stereoscopic Company, to have exhibitions to interest museums and galleries into stereoscopic and, in stereoscopy, and this is a, a tape we added to big exhibition for 11 months at Tate, and people could actually see paintings, the original paintings, and photos that were made after the paintings. <coughs> but it was difficult. These are stereos at an exhibition in Edinburgh. And this is uh, an exhibition which is still on at uh, uh, National Portrait Gallery, and there is one stereo, and uh, it was difficult for the assistant curator to convince the people at the, the NPG to actually have one stereoscope so that people could see it in 3D. So why is stereoscopy uh, just uh, neglected? Uh, in, in 1857, when you wanted to, to take a photo of Egypt, you had to pitch your tent next to the pyramids. This is the photographer's dark room. You, you had to take the photo whilst, while the plate was still wet. If you wanted to take a photo on a glacier, you had to take your equipment 
on top of the glacier and you had to develop your photo as soon as it was taken. So it was difficult and they took millions of stereo, millions. Now you have apps. You can take stereo with your phone. Uh, this is, uh, so you don't have to be to sit still for too long. Uh, okay? You just take two photos, you do this, click and click and that's it. And then you can actually, you can actually, sorry, you can actually look at the photo you've taken and it takes about uh, 10 seconds. Let's say maybe two seconds to take the photo and then five or seven to, to put it on your phone and uh, look at it in stereo. And you can have, you can use <coughs> stereoscope like this one or a smaller one just like Dr. May is holding here. So why are people not taking photos? Well, I don't know. I think it's because uh, well, it doesn't take longer to take a stereo photo than you take to put on a, du a duck face and take your selfie. It's no longer, no longer than that. But for some reason, people don't do stereo. So, is stereoscopy doomed to, um, to um, remain photography's poor relation? Well, stereoscopy takes time. It takes a few seconds to, for your eyes to adjust and find the, the 3D. And it takes a few seconds to actually take the photo. So people haven't got two seconds to spend because they are too busy uh, taking selfies. Of so, <laughs> so I think, yes, that unless people are a bit less selfie-ish or self-centered, stereo is doomed to be the poor relation of photography and will remain, unfortunately, a niche subject. Thank you. Thank you.